Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 3 where today I wanted to start by looking at our very impressive completed Doomkeep. Um, but as you can see, even though it is properly level 5, right? Yeah, it totally is. Um, <laughs> it still looks remarkably unfinished. There's like exposed scaffolding everywhere and... Look, what do I know about chaos architecture, right? They don't pay me to design cool castles. Someone should, but nobody ever has. So, uh, we are having a problem, and that problem's name is the Ice Court. I don't exactly know how we're going to deal with all of this. The Ice Queen bows to no one. So, notice, what is that? That's just a big snow leopard. That's pretty cool. We should play Kislev. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting distracted. Uh, so, on the units where we cannot see the number of um, bodies in the regiment, we don't get a good idea of how damaged they are. But judging from the fact that these two units are approximately at the same level of sort of like worn down by the, uh, the chaotic environment, I think we can probably assume that any unit here that isn't made up of a single body has suffered similar losses. So, even if these units, even if these, uh, units were all totally full. I'm still not sure that her 17 units would be able to get through the Doomkeep's garrison. Although, you know, her army is being led by a level 29 legendary lord with some real fancy... Is that a... That's a Warhammer 40k chainsword. The teeth... Yeah, at the wielder's command, the teeth race down the blade. She has a chainsaw. Where, where did she get a chainsaw? <laughs> I guess it gives corn corruption, right? So this must be one of the legendary weapons from... Do they have a corn soul? Yep, the ice court went to the corn thing last time, and this is... Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So that's cool. Apparently, apparently, at least some of the legendary weapons in the corn area are from the future. <laughs> that's pretty fun. Oh, the chain sword ability, like, powers up as you as you make kills up to plus 300% weapon damage. Wow, that is that is a really fantastic weapon. We got to go we got to go to the corn thing. Okay. One problem at a <laughs> one problem at a time. It's going to be a minute before the next howl. Anyway, my point was, I think the doomkeep can stand up to this army. I'm less certain of that now, but I th it's probably still true. So I don't think we necessarily need to be in a hurry to defend the doomkeep. Uh, my plan had been to take a Glixis to conquer Black Gulch. Do I feel like we can leave the Forgotten Citadel safely? So you're also pretty torn up. And remember, the they're constantly suffering attrition due to the fact that we have chaos corrupted the hell out of this area. Uh, Non-chaos armies are going to have a hard time surviving here. And then on top of that, just plagues. Just plagues always and forever. Um... Wow, the egg is actually incredibly brutal. Minus 25% movement range. Hold on a second. Demon Prince. The normal the normal egg is what we want to give. Okay, no, my, that's not one of my things. I still like causing terror on all of my units. I think that's very, very useful. Um, in case we hadn't talked about it. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh... So units that are units that are not immune to terror that are in melee with units that cause terror will just like break and run relatively frequently just for a second. But uh, obviously real easy to slaughter them while that's happening. Uh, so I do think that that's a pretty powerful effect. Then we have the altar of the Crimson Harvest being attacked by Puss Wind here. The altar's army is much larger, but it's also pretty attritioned down. I mean, so my plan was to take Falco to the Bay of Blades and recruit um, recruit units from the Doomkeep, right? Because the Bay of Blades and the Doomkeeper are in the same province. And I think that's still solid. I'm actually, do we know what their deal is? So they're also injured. If I had to guess, this is going to be like the last one of these that we saw, where the whole army is just plague bearers. 
So maybe we could take them because the even if the altar's um, army is kind of screwed up, a lot of it is just ranged units. We can just hammer them down at a distance. The Forsaken of Tsinch, who would who would form sort of the barrier in front of the ranged units, have 85 armor. I bet we could just repel them. Just ride the garrison out and shoot the heck out of them. It's calling the math as a decisive defeat. I think it's wrong. Let's 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 ride on this. I think we can do this. And every turn we wait is going to be worse and worse, right? Because our our units are going to suffer um, attrition damage. And I don't think that Falco is in a position to come down here and help at the moment. I think Falco needs to go to the Bay of Blades and probably spend like at least two turns recruiting units to refill from losses. So the settlement garrison repelling the Putrid Swarm is the is the thing that we need to happen. Uh, now, obviously, the danger here is there are an awful lot of these of these fellas and they could easily overwhelm my melee troops and get all up in our ranged units. But we also have a caster. I mean, the enemy's also also got a caster. Whatever, we're gonna figure this out. An iridescent horror of metal. I, ca I couldn't even say it without reflexively throwing up the horns. Uh, so we want to position ourselves in a position such that they are least likely to be able to receive cover from the trees. Oops, I did a bad job of selecting all of my units there. So we're going to have it be something... Actually, here, we'll have it be something like this. We can put our ranged units in front of our melee at the moment. Uh, because they don't have any range. So it is, it is to our benefit to get our ranged into firing as quickly as possible and then run our melee through. Interesting. They don't seem to be visible from where we are. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. I accidentally defocused the game. Not sure where they are, but I'm just going to kind of move up in formation here. And so we have a spellcaster. We have Searing Doom, which is like a rain of metal shards from the sky. And then also the Plague of Rust, which really blows up enemy armor. Uh, our enemies are not very armored, but that actually makes the spell uh, quite effective. So obviously, if you take something's armor away entirely, it takes an awful lot of damage from being attacked. Also, is our caster... Yes, our, our, our hero is capable of firing while moving, which is really cool. So yeah, they're over there somewhere. All right, well... I mean, we want to maintain our range advantage here, right? So I think what I might do is have the hero approach a little bit. We have to be careful about this because they do have some flying units and it would be really easy for them to just ru uh, rush forward with the flyers and bog our hero down. And I would really love for that not to occur. But we also need to get vision of them because I can't see a damn thing right now and it's really impeding my ability to position. I wish I had a single flying unit that we could use to sort of just relay information to the rest of the squad. So part of the problem here is this this hillside, and I don't know if it's a good idea to approach because they could be like right here. Okay, it looks like they're not. If that's the case, then we want to take up... If it is safe to do so, we want to take up residence at the top of this hill for sure. Just sort of like at the top of the crest of it. Because if they're going to let us shoot down on them as they have to run uphill, that's very close to the optimal uh, situation. And yeah, we can see that that is pretty much the case. Okay. All right. Don't don't provoke them too much. Let's let let's let our units get in place, and then we'll then we'll piss them off properly. So if I remember correctly, yeah, that's six, and this is four. I was going to say these are quite cheap spells. What's the range on Searing Doom? Uh, considerable. More than some by a bunch. So I'm going to use a quick Searing Doom to try to provoke them into approaching us. 
to make it clear to them that if they do not approach, we will just rain metal from the sky on them forever. Because I could do that spell all day. I think we're not quite as far forward as we'd like to be. Apologies that I'm being kind of like super careful here, but I do think that it... Um, I think it's going to matter because we're fighting with a severely wounded army. Like every... Every inch of this is going to count. We can do this, but that doesn't mean I think it's going to be trivial. Uh, our lord is uh, real chatty. He's a chatty fella here. So I can't overcast, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't have the overcast commitment available. There's a version of this where they just let me cast this spell until I run out of uh, magic, and then we get to start the fight, and I will absolutely take that. Because while it's not doing a huge amount of damage on any hit, it is it is harming them. And, like I was just saying, every inch of this is going to matter. I might, uh, let's put ourselves on, oh, never mind. They're beginning to move. I was going to say, until they start coming in, let's put ourselves on double speed. So this is the part where they start eating magic and then yep here come the volleys oh I like the automatic slowdown when I'm aiming a spell that's pretty cool okay so I think the units that can target the flyers without it being a big deal should definitely do so. I do think the rest of you, it probably makes, it makes sense to focus fire, right? It's not probably, it is definitely the case that it makes sense to focus fire. Let's try to burn out units. So what we're looking to do is hit units that are weak and in the middle of a lot of stuff so that any shots that miss still hit something of value. The Forsaken of Tsinch are well armored. They have very poor melee defense. Good spell resistance, but they don't have the physical resist that a lot of the other um, demon units have had, which is a real shame. They're, <laughs> they're immune to psychology, though. No fear, no terror. I guess that's something. And then I think we're going to have our Lord sort of bounce out around the side here. And we could Plague of Rust somebody. Do I want to do that? I'm going to Plague of Rust the Rod Flies, actually. Let's see if we can't burn them out real fast. All right, let them have it. Yeah, okay, that's cutting them down pretty quick. Our Lord can shoot on the move here. I am noticing that our units are dying a lot faster than I would like. That's having an effect, and I don't think I did much friendly fire. So just riding around, shooting people in the back, obviously, um, high value. One of my units is out of ammo already. Oh yeah, I guess we really don't have that much, do we? Uh, well, have I got some fun news for you, sunshine. <laughs> Your melee stats are not awesome, but once you're out of ammo, I don't really have any use for you other than charging a flank, so it's time to do that thing. Uh, it looks like... Okay, we did we did burn out the bug unit entirely. It's totally gone. It's a little hard to pick out individual corpses in the, the melee here, but... Uh, so we... We are wavering these nerglings. They're going to break real soon, and when they break, they're just going to fall apart, right? As we have seen uh, before with the demons. Let's have y'all just try to break this unit... You lot try to break that unit. I'm just going to kind of like rebalance my uh, my fire here. 
Yep, and here's hoping. And I think I'm gonna have my lord um, sort of push this way, because I want to start shooting at the back of their lord. Okay. <clears throat> can, at the very least, do some rear charges here. These units are not awesome at charging, but once they're out of ammo, what else am I supposed to do? And you can see that morale break immediately. The rear charge is a, it's a serious thing. Okay, where's, where's a dense-ish cluster of them? That's not bad. Go ahead and do this like that in the hopes of limiting the amount of friendly fire damage. lot charge through. These blue horrors have run out of ammo, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. The ones that are kind of in the middle of the line, like, they're gonna have a hard time, obviously, uh, getting any particular, uh, getting any flanking done. So with these units, I want to hit here, if we can. Getting a good break here. Yep, you can see their morale is failing badly. Okay, we did it. I figured we'd do it. Pyrrhic victory indeed. This right here was a uh, was a full launch pad McQuack, which is to say, you know, any <laughs> any victory you can walk away from, right? Honestly, it wasn't even that bad. We lost we lost a lot of people, but we also were fighting really wounded, and given, given the situation, that went really well. We held the bugs to only three kills before we cut them down. So that hopefully that serves as a good example of how important morale is. They lost that, even though they had superior fighters, um, they lost that battle entirely to panic and surrender. These are power, powerful tools of chaos. Almost as powerful as the Red Egg, if you can believe it. So, with that siege resolved, I don't think that's going to lighten the pressure up north any, but it's something. So let us devote this victory to the chaos gods, undivided. That's way more money than I was expecting. Holy crow. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, all right, we're pursuing upgrades down here already. Yeah, why don't you see if you can get rid of Ivana here? So I think we're going to want our... Um, uh, okay, weird time to tell me that, but yes, that's true. I did kill Puswind. Also, also Ivana. Hooray. Uh, yeah, so you, you, we were normal moving into the bay, and then we're mostly fighting infantry in the near future, yeah? Yeah, they got some horses, and they have, like, this snow leopard is a large unit. Um, you can tell by the size of the little, uh, the little token over here. So they have some large, and also the, um... The spear marauders are going to be better at just surviving. They have the higher the higher melee defense and everything. So we probably want to take some combination. Um, let's do like. I think I think that's okay. We'll, we'll pull in the, the normal marauders from the global pool because the price difference is a little bit more pronounced via global recruitment. So yeah, in two turns, this will be 16 units at full health and ready to ready to show up and help with stuff. And... Demon Prince. That's interesting. Do I want to let Iglixis rest for a turn? 
because that army's marauders are in pretty rough shape. One turn of healing will put this army back at basically full. I, I think that's okay. I think that's that's a fine thing to do. Uh, so we're good with that. Over here, we can pursue upgrades, although the city might get sieged and we might not actually get our upgrade progress right away. I think I'll probably leave that. Uh, and you have a pretty obvious job. Go ruin this army. So they have a couple of heroes. Let's see if we can carve one of those out. Not exactly, it turns out. Well, all right. There's a lot of... Can we... Can we do something about this? Is there any way to get more people in here to harass the ice court out of my territory? Or uh, honestly, the better move would be for me to play defense while we direct allies to take ice court territory. Right, because like the, the thing we the thing we really want to do is reduce their economic base. We can defend all day, but defense does not get us out of this war. It just makes the war take forever. So maybe I mean I know Erengrad has a very powerful dock. Yeah, Erengrad is producing a ton of resources. And also 800 income just by itself. That's just at the docks. So the best thing to do would be to hit them here. Are those vampires? Those are vampires. Okay. So they got vampires to their south, who I can't imagine things are going well with. Can we ask Corn to get down here and like do some do some murdering? Cause I know I had said I wanted to save up our allegiance with them, but like. But like, what if? It's probably too much to ask for them to go after Prague. But Erengrad is producing almost as much money. I mean, that's a big, that's a big move. Whatever, I'm going to do it. We are going to need all hands on deck with this taking out the ice court thing. Okay. At the very least, hopefully this will get some of their armies down here in ice court territory. Uh, messing things up, which is exactly what we need. A distraction more than anything else. Gosh, I hope they're able to actually cause the distraction. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a fun change of pace? God, look at how red that bar is. This is very disheartening. Okay. Elena's army attacked that. Um... Oh. That's another stack. Jeez. Okay. So Elena's army killed the corn army that was sitting up there already. Although I guess that's not a huge surprise. It was not a very large army. But also we have even more ice quarters sailing up from the south of us. And I am beginning to become concerned. And we need to like, we need to put a lid on this quickly. Because I need to have armies available next time, uh, next time the roar happens. I see no benefit to taking this for free. If you want to pay me, we'll talk again. Yeah, I mean, altogether, there are a lot of chaos factions up here. There's a lot of demons. There's a lot of Norskins. But we're not going to be able to take out the Ice Court unless we can align on this a little bit. This is definitely a thing we got to work together for. And I am concerned that we are not good at doing that. <laughs> she says immediately after refusing a non-aggression pact because they weren't paying for it. Okay, yeah, I can see how maybe I'm part of the problem here. Yep. How did Elena attack? I, uh, I wonder if she had gone into ambush mode. 
because Elena's army attacked the Graylings during the Grayling turn there. Oh, also the main Empire faction, <laughs> the men of the Empire have been obliterated. Well, yep, she was in fact laying in ambush. I'm very worried about this. I am starting to wonder if perhaps Black Gulch is not, um, not a thing we can afford to worry about. So yeah, this is a whole no higher power than I. Bloody hell. <laughs> That's a whole thing. Okay, the Altar of the Crimson Harvest will be upgraded next turn, as will the Forbidden Citadel, and then it'll have room for additional stuff. We did build a garrison building here. It's just that the Nurgle version of this building sucks ass. <laughs> yeah, it's it's bad troops all the way up, huh? Well, f fine, I suppose. Sinches, so... Sinches, awesome. They're going to attack the Bay of Blades Change is coming. in a way that I probably can't do very much about. The Bay of Blades does have a 19 unit garrison now. It has a real army and that army is basically at full health. But, but they're bringing an awful lot of bodies to this party. Um, such prismatic spirit. And if they ride in and siege up the bay, it stops my recruitment. So... How are we going to deal with this? You know, I was all like, every time I do a thing, every time I gear up to do a thing that's difficult and expensive, but that should relieve the pressure on us, it ends up not relieving anything. Because... Our enemies just have an infinite supply of pressure to bring to bear. Still can't kill him. We couldn't kill him when he was level 10 last turn. <laughs> now we can't kill him at level 12, which is not like a huge surprise. Okay, yeah, you need to get over here. You, you need to start producing some kind of value for me. I think Falco's got to bear out, got to bail out of the settlement. I think leaving Falco there is just going to get him killed. But the horror of horror. Okay. What if we just what if we just move Falco slightly outside the settlement in ambush mode? Because they you know they have to just like us, they have to move their armies into attack one at a time. So if I if I move far enough out that I'm getting the yeah here. 70%, the base 70% ambush chance. Of time, move oh, I don't, I don't know if I'm still inside of, I don't think I am inside of reinforcement range. Because the thing is, we need to be in reinforcement range of the city. Because as things stand right now, Falco's army can't win this fight alone. I need, I need to fire an ambush. It's a little hard to tell, but I think I'm just outside of it. And it looks like there is not, in fact, any place. Uh, maybe. March, move, mutate. I'm definitely in now. Am I in the good position? Hi, uh, we gotta try it. No, I'm not in the good position. Shoot. Can I? Can I try again? Can I just like wiggle a little bit? Seek, seek out. Uh, there's no indicator. There's no indicator in the game for if you are in reinforcement range of a thing. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up because there's a minimum amount of distance you can you can move with an executed move order. I'm trying to find the point on the map right here. Yeah, okay, it's too far north. Go, go, move. I'm gonna try it though. Let's see. Hide in flame. So we'll hide in the forest. The hope is that they will they will come ashore. They will get caught in the ambush. The units from the Bay of Blades will reinforce and we'll be able to we'll be able to go 30 units to their 20. 30 units to their 18. Or if Tsarina Katarin rides down here to um to provide reinforcements for the landing, then we ambush her first. 
If we wipe out one of these two armies, we might be able to hold against the other one in normal combat. We definitely cannot fight them both if we just let them come over here. And now I have to ask myself, can I stay in the Forbidden Citadel? Like, my plan had been to take Black Gulch, and I do think it's really important to deny the Ice Court this staging ground. Especially since they're like, right now they're trying to muster a new army here, preventing them from doing so seems uh, super high value. But also, if I just yield the Forbidden Citadel, then I'm making myself run back across here. How close can I teleport? Pretty damn close. Yeah, all right, do it. Search of We're gonna end the turn with a bunch of money up, even though there is stuff we could upgrade, because I want to have a seduce budget. Is there some point at which my seduce value gets improved? Because right now it seems like our, our maximum the maximum amount of seduction we're allowed to do is usually insufficient to seduce even a single unit. Access even more powerful demonic gifts. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Fingers crossed, y'all. There's a lot of there's a lot of if coming off of this plan right now. <laughs> Hopefully the exiles will be on their way to cause trouble soon. I know they they live kind of far away, but it probably helps that this is we'll the number one the faction they were worried about already. Uh yes. For money, yes, I will do treaties. <laughs> That's how it works. Congratulations on figuring it out. Huh. So the sieging army was able to get right up on land inside of my ambush zone without triggering the ambush somehow. I mean, this looks... There's no way we win this, right? And because the city's under siege, its units can't come out uh, to reinforce. So I think at this point we just have to back off. Uh, and the Bay of Blades is lost. The fact that um, the fact that, that one army was able to come ashore inside of my ambush zone uh, without, without triggering the ambush really sucks. I guess we're just going to have Falco withdraw to the Doomkeep. I don't know what the number of units I'd have to have in the Bay of Blades is to keep it, but apparently it's more than 19. That is a hell of a name. So we're going to be able to reinforce with Iglixis, though, in a second here, after we after we claim Black Gulch. We can ride on them, and of course, every moment that they're spending in demon territory is weakening them somewhat. It's a very gradual weakening, but it is happening. Hama Thane Frost is being an asshole. It really sucks that the Ice Court ignored uh, <laughs> ignored that Norse confection as they were coming up. Because, like, I don't have time to deal with this. I'd like to deal with it. Toys with our land. So this adds better tower projectiles. It's three turns, though. We'll never get it done. Can I... Yeah, let's take out their caster. Okay, we got there. We got one. And Cran is uh, acquiring a little entourage. Yeah, get better at assault units, because that's the next thing you're doing. Hellish power. It should be no problem at all for Eglixis to take this. I'll freeze off your fingers. 
Okay, yeah, they've, they've got archers and stuff, but they've run most of their force way too far away to do anything about the thing that's about to happen here. Sarina Katarin is positively vibrating with excitement about the attack. 26%. Wait, what? Are you still... No, you're not still exhausted. You're just bad at your job all of a sudden. Uh, she's got some kind of... She's got some kind of hero action protection. Alright. Okay, that's that's some real damage. Uh, sure. Alright, we gotta do this. We don't actually have a choice. This is mine. It is claimed that we are that we are going to get wrecked. I think they're mistaken. That said, 3,000, man. So we're not allowed to hire out, we're not allowed to seduce out any of their good units. Uh, we can take this pistol and axe infantry. I mean, this seems like a pretty good unit. Swings, thing in our, things, uh, swings things in our favor. Yeah. Let's do it. We've never actually done it before, and I want to I wanna actually use the power. All right. And in theory, should we win this, um, this will be the battle that lets us dedicate to Chaos Undivided, which hopefully will help us a lot. Ooh. Yeah, 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 because it's like set back into the mountains, right? This is cool. I'm very I'm very eager to see what the rest of these um these battle maps look like. We're seeing one we're seeing a lot of things that are kind of similar because all of our siege battles so far have taken place in Norska, but I'm very curious what the ones in the rest of the world are like. So the reinforcements are coming in from this side. So, I mean, it is definitely the case that the defenders inside the city are pretty weak. And I'm wondering if maybe the play is that we just sort of disregard them. What is... Okay. Chaos, you know? If they don't like it, they should not have taken over the settlement. I'm sort of wondering if we want to just go over here and crush their reinforcements. Because they have this, and then they have a, an army that has some actual units in here. We just party over here and, and smash all their stuff, and then we reposition to take the settlement from the survivors. I honestly kind of like that as a plan. Let's fight half of their army, and then a different half of their army afterward, right? Oh, you have to be so close to do your job. I put them down backwards. My, my bad. Yeah, and then everybody else just kind of like be over here nearby. Probably not even directly involved. Pink horrors have better range. Let me put them up here. Um, I kind of want... How much ammo do the Kosars have? Very little. Yeah, let's let's keep them out of the fight. We'll save them for when things get really ugly. So, I'm just gonna, um... <laughs> We're just gonna burn two minutes here real quick. And, uh, we'll keep an eye on their forces. I know we're giving them time to accumulate supplies and build up defenses, but I don't really think it's gonna be a problem. That, that force in there is so tiny. Who did I forget to pull? Does it matter much? Oh, my blood letters. Sure. Yep, I sure did. Well, they're not, like, riding on us or anything, so I think I'm just going to let it go. Let's get you... You know what? You know what? You know what? Don't even do that. 
just stay over here and we'll use you during phase two to take down the, the settlement a little bit faster. Okay. This way we can we can hit from more sides more quickly. Holy hell. Really? You want to fight the Chaos Warriors that badly? Are you sure? <laughs> Jeez. Alright, so that should knock him out pretty quickly. We don't know exactly how long we're talking about on the yes, other lords, so right? Or the other army? Because they do have a second reinforcement force. Maybe the second reinforcements actually didn't commit to the battle? Send the champion of chaos. I didn't see you were done. Okay, well... Let me take it easy on the, uh... On the hitting your friends thing. Demon Prince! Evisceration! Okay. So we killed... We killed their character. And I guess, yeah, the rest of the reinforcements just aren't showing up. They were on the, the mid... The mid-battle screen, right? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um, oh, I guess they're... They must already be inside... Yeah, because they were... That army was inside the city. It was presented as a reinforcement army on that screen. But they're not actually using the reinforcement mechanic. Because they were inside of the settlement. They should probably clean up the presentation of that a little bit. Okay, so we'll approach this side from the back as we can do there's no way let's see this links from here which we can't get down from this path to that path right so i guess this is how we approach that okay let's get everybody over here and then we'll uh We'll begin the assault. So some of us will cross the bridge into the upper part of the uh, the base. Some of us will grab this and then continue on this way to the backside. So right now, this is giving every unit on the on their team the siege defender trait, which is increasing their melee defense and their leadership. As long as they are inside the fort and have some HP. And then the rest of these are just allowing for the construction of buildings. All right, well, I guess there's no reason to wait, really. Just, like, go ahead and get over here. I don't need the flyers to do that, actually. The calves should be able to handle it by themselves. And then you lot... They are building a tower. And that tower is controlled by this point. It's like, this is our move, but I'm a little leery of ordering that too quickly. Uh, you are probably going to want to back off. I want to make sure we're not just in range of that tower. We go. So this controls these locations where they're not actually doing anything right now. But it also it yields supplies, right? Yeah, so by taking away these minor points, we are reducing the rate at which they they build stuff up. I will conquer. Can we just damage the towers? In, in the previous games, you could just destroy a tower with damage. Um, I'm curious, once it's actually built... Uh, 
Okay, yeah, it does. It has a fair amount of health. What if Iglixis just <laughs> goes over there and rumbles with it? Actually, you know what? These units are approaching in kind of a non-optimal way. Let's, um, before the bridge, let's take a moment and reassess here. Because th this is what I see. Yeah, I sent the Chaos Warriors over here. Uh, we are going to need the Chaos Warriors in front, obviously. As we approach the actual point. Because it does look like they're coming around to play defense. And uh, my flyers will have something to say about that. And I had sent the caster along over here, right? Where, where is she? She's here. Yeah, she got here before everybody else, because of course she did. Uh, well, I guess the move for them is just to go up here, right? Hopefully they interpret that. I mean, it's got to be. That's the only way it makes any sense for them to go. I'm sure that's the way they will go. Okay. Let's see about our lord destroying a tower with his giant powerful arms. That's okay. That's a weird way to focus it. You know what I'm... You know what I'm saying, though. He's strong. Is, is my point. Hopefully, the shields will take care of these little hits. Okay, there we go. Attack animations. So yeah, he's taking off like 10% of this thing's HP with every attack. That probably won't take too long. What a terrifying unit. I'm telling you, legendary lords. Okay, so they're they're coming out. We gotta we gotta engage. We got some cav here, and they are after my caster. My caster has run way ahead because that is what I told her to do. I'm gonna have her run the hell back here, and we're gonna need our own cav to be ready to counter charge. And then the rest of our flyers are nearby, right? Yeah. Okay. Also ready to counter charge, because it looks like it may be necessary. And behind them, we have a unit of Tsar Guard, which is fine. Fine, we'll deal with it. And Iglixis will get in there as, uh, as soon as it's reasonable to do so as well. Okay, interesting. Um... Well, convert some of this energy into a charge directly. And I guess you lot do the same? Just fucking dive bomb them. Do I want to lash? Doesn't seem like a terrible place to throw a lash. A nice overcasted mega lash. Make sure I'm directing at least some of us against the uh, the rear cav. We'll fire her locus of grace in a second here when it makes when we got enough units in. What I did not accurately um, figure on, and I feel a little silly about it now, is that that was not just about my units that were moving up. It was about reclaiming the point, because of course it was. How's this tower doing? Mm, close. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him finish it. Obviously, it would be nice to get him over here. Uh, how close do you have to get to be in firing range? It's like close, close. I do not want to give them an order that some of them read as an order to get off the bridge. And I don't seem to have much other choice. <laughs> they won't all fit on the bridge, and they are going to take this order in the worst, in the worst, least sensible way possible if I'm not very careful about it. So let's try being a little bit more careful about it. Okay. Cavalry are getting burned pretty quickly. 
try to redirect the flyers up here, and as soon as Iglixis breaks this thing, Iglixis is over here as well. So, we still have these blood letters. And my hope was that we'd get to a moment where it made sense to just push. Oh wow, that tower actually has range all the way out to here. I think the blood letters are keeping a couple of units distracted, so that's something. But it doesn't look like they're going to actually be able to get aggressive. Let's try getting over here. There's some foolishness going on. There's some there's some non-optimal play, potentially. Do I want to try... An overcast slicing shards right here could do a lot of damage. A lot of my units are kind of slow to approach, but we have the... Uh... Okay. Yep, it sure did. Utilize their glorious annihilation. Now, I'm just gonna have a Glixis drop on these fools. Attack! What are you doing? Up is not the direction they're in. There we go. That's what we needed. Okay, so we broke their cav. Flyers need to get out of tower range. How'd the flyers pursue those Cossars there? And the Chaos Warriors... I mean, Chaos Warriors, your plan is just push to the box. New, new plans coming down the pike all the time, but the general thrust remains the same. over here and break some stuff. Uh, let's have the Seekers fall back. We don't really need them getting involved with these elite melee troops. Marauders keep them in place while Iglixis finishes the job. And we need to build up some more, um, some more violence, obviously. Oh, I didn't actually finish killing this thing. I got a, we, there was another you are attacking an, an enemy building notification that I think I just interpreted as, okay, it's done. So, were we to approach this way? I mean, the blood letters can get in behind this supply point that we're approaching. I don't know. Once we're closer to it, because the blood letters are pretty fast. I don't want them running through tower fire before the rest of us are in position to actually do the thing. Get over here. Yeah, I thought so. The ranged units are thinking they can just come back to the fight. Strongly disagree. Here comes Eclipsis to buy us some time on this front. Jeez. burning through his shield pretty quickly. Alright, so this supply point is the big important one, right? Th yeah, this is the one that con th that controls all of the towers everywhere. So we do need to figure this out. Uh, yeah, just finish the job. I can't really move, like, they're gonna get stuck on the Sargard. So I can't really move these uh, these cav units out just yet. Once we take this point, though, I think the the battle sort of collapses into a a secondary stage. God, here's the thing I didn't really think about when we were building these chaos warriors. They are slower than molasses. It is really it has taken them one hundred thousand years to get into position to do absolutely anything. Hmm. Do I want to... No, probably not. It's probably not worth it. I was thinking about moving some of the ranged units up and trying to shoot down on her, but she's not going to survive, like, ten seconds in the ring with Iglixis, so 
That's how we'll solve that particular problem. Don't let him run. You gotta stay focused, my dude. Okay, we'll have these archers dead real soon. That's a that's a waiver. As soon as that waiver turns into a break, the uh cav are coming through here. Yep, Iglixis totally did just decide he was done following orders. Fortunately, we have units who are capable of doing a thing. You know what? Change my mind. Why can I not select this unit? Jesus, okay. So yeah, they're not going to be able to push the Chaos Warriors out of the box with with arrow fire. And that kills all of their towers. Every tower of value is now toast. Do not stop fighting. I don't know why my units always have to be so difficult about this. Just keep, just keep doing it. You know how you're doing a good job and everything? Just keep doing a good job. Why not? So those units all press up there. You lot. Um, I think what we want to do is is get the get these ranged focused over here. Let's try to burn out these forces, and this is the moment to bring in the blood letters as well. Yeah, just across the bridge and. Each of you rushes one of the units of range just to make them feel like they can't sit still and be safe, and Eglixis is going to help clean them up. Because my Chaos Warriors are never going to actually catch up with them. My Alright, swing was like a little premature there, friend, but there we go, he's getting it. Okay, they're casting spells on us. My Chaos Warriors have completely stopped moving so that they may absorb the spell more fully. Because they are not too bright. Okay. So the Seekers are just now making their charge. Let's get the flying units out behind here. Actually, flying units, those troops. Because I see what they're going to try to do, and we're not going to let them do it. Uh, do y'all just turn and try to kill this witch? Because I bet, I bet we can go wizard to wizard here in a pretty serious way. All right, so the spell that we just opened up. Strong damage to combatants. Okay, it's not anything fancy. It's just, it's just damage that makes people rampage. Um... Let's just take them out of commission so they don't fire on the blood letters as the blood letters are crossing the bridge. Okay, let's see about this. Did we pick up that spell that prevents people from moving? No. But I do have acquiescence. Suffer. Holy hell. Oh, swing and a miss. Attack. Using your dashing uppercut while you're already in melee range. Kind of a... There we go. Okay, yeah, that's going to go down pretty quickly. This world is mine. Okay, we got new incoming. Let's redirect our attention a little bit here. I did not tell you to stop. Alright. Ah, it's a quick, glorious annihilation here. Okay, that's working. Supple servants of Slanesh. Trying to pull the. Actually, can the Seekers get out on this side? We can probably just, like, mass through here. Eh, maybe not. I was hoping that we could just shove them aside. But I don't. Our charge was not quite yes. deep enough. Marauders! Okay, it's working. This 
Because obviously, if we can get through here, then we just turn around and rear charge them. Bring while our melee do a terrible job of holding them down. There we go. That's how you're supposed to do that. How's this wizard thing going? Is she dead already? No, you just let her go. You just let her go recapture the point. Y'all, I... Y'all. All right, blood letters are being allowed, are being fired on, because these units are so much faster than my Chaos Warriors, and they're only six points faster. It should not be the case that they are capable of running and stopping and shooting and then running again before we can catch them. But here, let's have, now that, now that a lot of this has been sort of worked out, let's have some units press up here. Should be able to grab this pretty trivially. Once this unit is dead, uh, we can yes. progress forward to the main point. The aesthetics are I cannot believe you just let her get away. This supply point doesn't do very much for them, I don't think, but it's still like very annoying. Again, acquiescence. The initial charging blow is so significant. Alright, she's using a... Oh, yeah, well, at least the uh, at least the borrowed units are doing a lot of absorbing enemy attention. Ooh, 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 hold on a second. Ranged units. Can you just turn and fire on these ones? The pink horrors at least should be able to, right? Where's Iglixis at this moment? Okay, he can do that. You can keep pushing there. You know what? They're, they're thinking about coming back to the battle and I would love it if they didn't do that. This is taking forever, but we're getting it. Okay, and this, this has happened. So forward, smash the barricade and then on till, uh, on till morning. I do believe that we've got this. Please do not stop chasing the enemy. <laughs> okay, this time I feel like she's actually doing her job as well. Also, a hail of gunfire helps. <laughs> the posing is very important. You know, Slanish is a god of aesthetics. You gotta look, you gotta look cool to be cool. All right, I don't even know what I want you lot to do. Get, get over here, I guess. Yeah, that'll work. All right, they are permanently broken. I feel like we should be seeing some surrender any minute now. Actually, no. you go, you go back here and recap this. Chaos Warriors just stopped running because they are done with life. You know what? Never mind. Never mind, just leave. We don't care about this. For chaos, seeking victims. Hmm. Streltsies with their guns and whatnot. Uh. That's a tough one. We don't, we don't have a good answer to that. Get over there and do melee damage? I don't really want the blood letters to charge for Let's have the blood letters run this way, because the blood letters are just going to get cut to cut to pieces by gunfire. Are my... Where are my flyers at? Okay, they have finally broken these units. It took them a long time. Let's have them run over here for these units behind, because that's going to be necessary. Okay. Taking a remarkable amount of time to get this job done, but we are getting it done. Chaos Warrior. <laughs> They're still not permanently broken. So, okay. Obviously, as soon as she recaps this, she's out of here. Okay. 
constructing a trap uh, that I will just run across, I think. <laughs> it's my big plan. Oh, and there goes the morale. I think they are, uh, you see, they just used a, an ability to replenish their morale as it was taking a dive there. Potentially not worth the, not worth the cost, honestly. Do, I do believe this battle is well and truly lost. Well, I mean, I guess it's an ability. If the battle is lost, the ability is not worth anything anymore, so. But yeah, this is, this is going to be the end of this. Okay. It took some doing, but we got there. I definitely misread which units were going to show up as reinforcements, and that's, you know, that's a tiny bit embarrassing. So, in total, 95 losses. Honestly, most of the damage was sustained by our characters, which I'm, I'm pretty fine with. Or not most, but you know, the the plurality, I suppose. The char the characters took more damage than the unit than any unit did. It's why That's a good way to balance your um your damage. In general, you do want it spread out, though, and we could have done a better job of that, because each unit gets the same amount of replenishment no matter how many units are damaged, right? So it makes the most sense to spread the damage as evenly over your force as possible. And honestly, I don't think we did too bad a job of that. Didn't necessarily get a lot of kills for the ranged. The pink horrors have already pushed up to um to gold ranks, and they are just going to keep advancing. And then hopefully Eglixis' army is gonna be in a good <laughs> good shape to challenge. And then my computer crashed because it is haunted. Um <laughs> I don't know, there's not much more to say about that. I have been having some technical difficulties lately. Uh, so, we lost a little bit of progress. You know, the game autosaves quite robustly. So, I'm going to play right back up through the battle, battle of Black Gulch again. And when you come back next time tomorrow, we will be post-Black Gulch Siege and hopefully able to push Tsarina Katarin out of our land and then figure out some way of keeping her out. Um, the situation looks... It looks bad. Hopefully help is on the way. For now... I'm very concerned. Uh, come back next time tomorrow to see how we get out of this. And we'll see you then.